Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, today I'm going to be showing you a quick little install video for the 3D Chameleon on the K1 slash K1 Max 3D printers. The install is pretty straightforward. Um, there's not too much complication with it. Um, as you'll see in this video, um, I'm going to kind of go over just the main things of it and just kind of give a quick rundown of how to install it, um, some tips that might be useful for when installing it, and so on. So, yeah. So obviously you're going to start with your 3D Chameleon system. Um, disregard mine being a different color. I've rebuilt this a couple of times. Um, kind of want to just learn how this system works. So, uh, no worries about that there. So you're going to take your 3D Chameleon system. You're going to have your switch. And then you're going to have your main board with your cables. And then there's going to be two things you need to print out. One is going to be the switch mount. This is going to mount to the right side rear stepper motor um, and then you're going to need the base plate for the board along with the mounting of the chameleon itself uh, this is going to mount to the back side of the k1 slash k1 maxes um, pretty easy to set up yours is probably going to come pre-installed on a mount already so you're just going to need to remove this main board and then remove the mounts from the chameleon system itself um, and then you're just going to use the included screws, you're going to mount up the switch to the plate here, and it's going to be facing outward, like so. If you imagine it's going to be sitting on top of the stepper motor, essentially like this. So then the tool head of the K1 or K1 Max is going to come up and touch the switch here. And then this is just going to be on the back side. Um, simple as tossing this on here. You want to make sure the PTFE tubing is facing outward. Um, easy way to tell is like the holes for where you mount it to the K1. You want the extruder ports to be facing that way. Just like that. And you take the included screws there. That will be everything preferably. Just gonna sit like that. And you're gonna take the included screws. Let me go ahead and flip it over. Mount it to that plate you printed. Mine's a little warped. I had some bad adhesion issues again. One of the first things you want to do when you get yours is just to test out everything and make sure that the uh, chameleon is functioning as intended. So I'm just going to go ahead and wire it up real quick. Um, some things to keep note of, the black plug that goes into the board here, that's going to be the switch cable. Uh, the green wire is going to be facing outward towards the chameleon, um, it's helpful to keep track of that. And then for the stepper motor plugs, it's going to be red wires facing outwards toward the chameleon. And then once it's wired up, it should be green wire, or excuse me, red wires facing out towards the board. Um, if you have them backwards, it's not going to feed properly. So just make sure you have them running in the correct motor. The selector motor, which is going to be this side here, it's easy way to tell is it has the filament ports here. Uh, the stepper motor should be the one vibrating. So if this is not vibrating, then you need to make sure you swap it to the correct motor. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here just to show you guys. Um, so with the K1s, you're going to want to make sure you're in mode 3. Um, to make sure you're in mode 3, you're just going to hold down the switch for 10 seconds or 10 pulses on the motor. and it'll pulse one, two, or three. That'll determine which mode you're in. So pulse one time, so then you wanna make sure you just hold it down two more times to get to mode three. Perfect. All right, and 
once you have that all sorted out, you can obviously unplug the everything. Uh, just make sure to keep track of which plugs go where. Um, otherwise, it's not going to function as intended. And then you want to make sure that you mount this to the mount for the switch. Um, my one mount or one bolt hole for the mount is actually stripped out. I over tightened it, so just make sure you're very careful when you're retightening this. Um, I'll make sure to include um, somewhere in here just a detailed explanation of which bolt goes where or which size bolt you want to use. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get everything taken apart and then I'm going to go ahead and set up on the K1. Next step on the K1 is to go ahead and remove the bolt holding in the right rear stepper motor. As you can tell I stripped it out, so I'm going to have to create a new mount for that. So we're just going to ignore that for now. But yeah, so basically the switch is going to be facing out that way, with the plug facing out. That's just going to sit there. Make sure you're careful when tightening that down as that can strip out pretty easily. And then once you're done with that, we're going to move to the back side of the printer. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the PTFE tubing from the runout sensor. Um, you could probably keep using this if you wanted to, but for my case, I don't really see a need for it. Um, so basically, you're just going to pull it out. And then the tip for this is to keep a piece of filament in there to bypass the sensor if you're going to skip this. Um, that way you just don't have to deal with the warnings on the printer. And then the next step is to mount the plate to the chameleon and you're going to remove these two screws here and then these are m3 by 10 screws and the chameleon is going to mount through those holes there to the back side so i'm going to go ahead and do that once you have your chameleon mounted up to your k1 your filament sensor um, bypassed you're going to have to figure out a place for your splitter um, you can mount it to here just using some zip ties. I actually designed like a little mount here um, It's not really the best. It's kind of a hob job together kind of thing There are some mounts that I think go on this side here. Uh, I'll make sure to include those in the description um, But yeah, you basically just figure out however you want to mount it doesn't really matter too much And then you'll want to trim your PTFE tubings to the distance of where your splitter is Make sure not to come too short, otherwise you're going to have to take it apart and rebuild it. I'll have another video on how to disassemble and rebuild this later. And then, yeah, it should look like something like that, however you have it set up. Um, you don't want them to be too long, otherwise you're going to have to adjust some of the timing. Um, you kind of want them just to fit just right, but still have enough space to have some flow. And then you're going to want to take your switch plug, pull it up into the K1. I actually like to feed mine through this little loop here. The K1 Max is probably a little bit different. Um, I don't know, I don't have a K1 Max, so I can't vouch for it, unfortunately. But um, I kind of like pull this little cable up here out of the way. It's very hard to do one-handed. And then just kind of tuck that through there. Kind of help just keep it a little more organized. And then obviously plug it into the switch. Mine's not mounted because, yeah. Basically, the last thing to do is to connect PTFE tubing to the Y splitter, like so. And then, yeah, you're pretty much get focus here. Yeah, you're pretty much set up and installed. Um, the next thing to do is basically just get the G code running. Um, do a couple test runs and that's pretty much it. Um, when mounting the cabling, um, it's really helpful to use the spool holder that comes provided with the K1s. Um, kind of just wrap the cable around, pull them out of the way. You want to make sure they're not interfering with anything and just zip tie them somewhere. I have mine zip tied to here. Um, yeah. Some small things I wanted to touch on also was it's nice to have a good filament roller. Uh, just to help keep things organized. I really like this one. This is a modular design by uh, Forma Futura, I believe it is, on printables. I'll make sure to add a link for this. Um, it's really cool. It's fully 3D printed, and you can basically extend it as far as you want. You can pretty much have as many spools as you need, really.
And then another thing I wanted to touch on was the stock PTFE tubing that comes with the K1 or K1 Max. Uh, it has improper sizing for feeding through. Uh, Bill had touched on this. He's the creator of the 3D Chameleon. So when you, whenever you trim your tubes from the chameleon itself, just take one of them and feed it through here and then attach it to your Y. That'll help uh, with feeding it. One way to test is just to move the motor to one of the far corners and then just make sure it's not too stretched. Um, I like to give mine a little bit of slack. That kind of just helps, you know, flow things through smoothly. Some people have asked about it feeding with the extruder being locked. So basically how this works, um, when the chameleon is feeding it up and through, the G-code basically tells the tool head, or the extruder I should say, to also feed basically by the time that the filament is hitting the extruder. This, the force with the chameleon and then the extruder from the tool head will pull the filament through in the locked position. So there's not really any need to have it unlocked. Um, having it unlocked isn't really gonna work. So I just wanted to point that out for people that were curious. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's essentially the full install. Um, Hopefully I covered everything that people are looking for. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to throw them in the comment section and I'll do my best to help you out. I have a plan to hopefully go over some of the slicer info, um, some more of the G-code. I'm still pretty much learning it myself as I go, so I'm not definitely not a professional. I'm just trying to uh, help out as many people as I can because I know some people have been asking for a good video on how to do this. So yeah, hopefully this helped you guys. Um, and uh, yeah. Leave a like or feel, feel free to subscribe if you like the content and hopefully in the future I'll have some better videos out for you guys. Thanks for stopping. Bye.